at some point when you're out mountain biking, you're pretty likely that you're gonna break a spoke like this one here. Now, the sensible thing to do would be to go straight to your nearest bike shop and get them to fix it for you. It's not always the case though. Sometimes you might be on a riding holiday, for example, you might be somewhere remote, it could be at a bike race or a bike event, or even just out bike packing. In which case, I'm gonna show you how to replace a spoke without messing up your wheel. Okay, before we start the video, let's just talk a little bit about the humble spoke because they come in a few different lengths, uh, quite a lot of different lengths actually for different size wheels, and two major varieties, straight pull and a J-bend like this one. Now, bearing in mind that bikes have wheels from 29 inch, 27 and a half, 26 and 24, and of course the different hub spacing on them is gonna make sure that the spoke length varies immensely. Now, the way a spoke length is measured is typically from the very end of the threads to the curve point, uh, basically if it's a J-Bend spoke or to the tip of the head if it's a straight pull. Now a really useful tool to have to a mechanic is a ruler like this that enables you to accurately measure spoke length. Uh, it's dead simple, obviously you can use it as a ruler for other things as well so it's going to be a useful tool but it's really important to make sure you have the correct length spokes. Now it's a really good idea, I think, to have a few spare spokes and put a bit of tape around them with the number on there and for the wheel it correlates to, uh, so you know which one it is without having to faff around and constantly measure them. Now if you are going away, going to race, whatever like that, stick them in your toolbox. Um, if you're going bike packing, for example, I know quite a few people that tape them onto long parts of the frame, like uh, along the chain stay or the seat stay, somewhere like that, so they're just on the bike because they can go awkward times and one of the things that happens when a spoke breaks is essentially the tension in the wheel um, is disrupted. So it depends on how well built the wheel is in the first place and if the wheel's had any other damage. But if it was a completely straight wheel and you remove one spoke from it, it's gonna buckle over to one side slightly because you've removed that tension. So it's really important to sort of uh, restore it so you continue basically as the spoke is supposed to be within that wheel. Now typically spokes will break in one of two places, of course there will be exceptions to the rule, uh, but the obvious ones from riding will be at the top of the threads there, and this happens essentially because perhaps you've overloaded your wheel, you've landed sideways, you've hit something really hard, and you've put an extreme amount of load on the spoke. So the whole, whole wheel basically is like almost like suspension and the spokes work under tension. So if you remove tension at one end, you're gonna add loads onto other spokes. And that is a prime area for them to break, because essentially when they cut the threads onto a spoke in the first place, you're removing a small amount of material. Uh, so it's kind of no surprise really that that's an area. The other common one is at the tip of the J-bend there. Uh, it's of course a corner, so it creates a problem where stress can occur. Again, it's always under a bizarre situation. They're not just gonna break from typical riding along. Uh, you won't see them break in there on a straight pull spoke quite as much. It will tend to be the threaded end. Now, when your spoke actually breaks, I mean, you might break a few if you're really unlucky, but you typically break a single spoke. And when that happens, assuming that your wheel was true to start with, you'll find the rim will pull over to the opposite side to what the spoke was on, uh, simply just because you've removed the tension that that had, and you've basically got to restore the equilibrium on the wheel by getting a new spoke in there and nipping up to the same tension. Now, we're gonna to get to that in the video, but before then, there's a few tools you're gonna to need. Okay, so tools for the job. Firstly, you're gonna need fresh spoke or spokes, depending on um, how many you've broken on your bike. Now, on my bike, it has a J-bend at one end, and I've got the nipple here as well, so I've got a fresh nipple. Also note, there's a tiny little washer. Now, some spokes uh, do need that washer on them. Uh, my rim is a carbon rim, so it does need that. So just take care not to lose that if you have one of those. Next up, you're gonna need a spoke key. Now, spoke keys come in different sizes, so it's really important to make sure you've got one that is gonna fit the spoke nipples on your particular bike. Now, you can get spoke keys with various different sizes on, and they're great, but they can be a little bit more fiddly to use than a dedicated one, so just pick what works best for you. Now, I like to have a little bit of dry lube just to put on the threads of the spoke uh, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when you're putting that new nipple onto the spoke, Basically, you can create tension on the actual spoke and the spoke can actually wind up slightly as you're tightening the nipple, which is a part of wheel building and it's a part of the process you have to remove, but it does just help that slightly. Also, the spokes can creak, helps remove that. 
And by using a dry lube rather than a horrendously sticky wet lube, uh, you're lessening the chances of any dirt and stuff sticking to it afterwards because essentially a dry lube, the wet part is a carrier, so that will just evaporate. So you can, once it's dried up, you can just wipe it clean and hopefully you'll get nothing sticking to it. If your bike has bladed spokes, you might want one of these. Uh, it's essentially a little holder to stop that spoke moving as you're adjusting the nipple, uh, but you don't see that too often on mountain bikes. Uh, some of the older Mavic wheels will have had that on there, uh, but still, you'll need that if you've got bladed spokes. Next up, you're gonna need either a screwdriver or if you've got wheel building set, a nipple driver. Now, when you put the nipple into the rim, you do need to kind of hold it in place while you put the spoke in there, and that's what they're for. Uh, but let's face it, most people attempting to do this home are gonna be doing it with a screwdriver. Just make sure you've got one that fits into the nipple that you have, uh, and it's literally just to hold it in place. Now, just a little point, I'll accentuate this a bit later in the video, but it's really easy to drop that nipple in the cavity of the rim, and it can be a real pain to get it out. So do take care of that part of the process. If your rim, for example, is a really deep section one, then it's a good idea to thread the nipple from the other end on another spoke and use that to push it through. Now, I'll show you how to do that. And finally, I'm gonna be showing you this in a uh, dedicated workshop truing stand, but that's, let's face it, it's not something that everyone has. So you can flip your bike upside down and use your fork or your frame just to spin the, the wheel around on the inside there. And all you'll need really to do that is cable ties or something else to create almost an artificial version of these, which essentially you dial them in as close to the rim as possible so you can monitor that movement side to side. Uh, I've done this many times out on the trail uh, when I've been out riding holidays and stuff and just the old classic cable tie just to do the same job. A little bit more fiddly, but it will do you just fine. Okay, first things first, a little bit of prep work you've got to do. So if you're out on a trail, that means removing your tire. Um, it's going to get messy, unfortunately, if that's what you've got to do, because you're likely to have tubular sealant and all sorts of other stuff going on. So do your best to try and clean up, and you're also going to need to remove the rim tape as well. Uh, now, you could arguably get away with just making a hole where the actual relevant one is, but you're still going to need to cover that up. So I'm going to cut this rim tape off, but as you might notice as well, if I turn this, you can hear that nipple running around in the rim cavity. So we're gonna have to get that one out as well. And just while you're here as well, it's also important to observe the pattern of the spokes on your particular wheel. Now you can get two cross, three cross, four cross uh, style wheels. So just something to observe. The way on the outside here, the nipple is put in from my side of the hub, pushed through to the outside, and it goes over the first spoke, over the second spoke, under the third spoke, and then into the rim. And it could be the opposite way around, depending on the way the wheel is built. But you must make sure that when you put the new spoke in, it follows suit what all the others are doing. Otherwise, it's just not going to get the same sort of tension on the wheel. Um, so there we go. I'm going to remove this one from the wheel now. And then we're going to get the rim tape off. Also means having, in this case, to remove the tubeless valve. Okay, now I don't have a knife, so I'm going to just carefully score it. Now, you obviously notice that I'm removing the rim tape here. It's also why I always insist on taking with me when I'm on trips, taking some electrical tape and some Gorilla tape, because taking a big roll of the dedicated tape can be a bit big to store, whereas a small roll of electrical tape can actually be used to get your, your tire sealed properly again and get you back on the trail. Of course, it's not a permanent fix, but it's much more convenient than taking a full-size reel of tape with you. Let's go to where the hole is. It's right there. And there we go, there's a little offending spoke nipple as well. Now that can be a real pain getting it out, so just take your time and hopefully you'll get yours out. Uh, you definitely don't want to leave it in there because it will drive you potty as you're out riding. You just hear it rattling around inside. Yeah, it's also a really nasty practical joke to do on your mates, by the way, but um, save that for another time. Needless to say, before doing this process, you will need to remove your disc rotor, or if it's a rear wheel, uh, your disc rotor, and potentially a cassette as well, depending on which side it is. Probably should have said that at the beginning, but hey, mine's prepped and ready to go. So now I've got the offending spoke nipple out of the rim cavity there and checked there's nothing rattling around. I've removed the spoke, now it's time to put the fresh spoke in. Like I said, the most important thing is to make sure it goes in the same way as all the others are laced up. So just take your time here and just make sure you think about what is going on. Mm -hmm. 
Now I'm resting the wheel on my knees. You might notice that uh, a lot of wheel builders will do this in bike shops. They'll lean the wheel against the, sort of the belt or the waist and the other end up against the workbench. It's just a way of having the wheel in a good place. You can see what's going on. And I'm just gonna drop the spoke down into the correct place here. So there we go. Right, so this is ready now to follow suit of what the others are doing. So I can see from here, it needs to go underneath, underneath, and then over before coming in towards the nipple here. So that would be underneath or on your side, over, over, bend it around that one, and then back in, okay? And then that is ready then to meet with the nipple at the rim. Now, just before we put the nipple in place, I'm just gonna put a very small amount of lube just on the threads here. As I said in the tool section of the video, I like to use a little bit of dry lube because of the fact that it will just evaporate and it's not gonna cause too much mess. Uh, but obviously, using lube when you're working around wheels, make sure it can't go near braking surfaces, all that sort of stuff. Okay, now on to getting the nipple in place in a rim. Okay, now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you're both trying to hold the nipple in place and get the spoke into, into the actual nipple itself. So a little bit of whittling around here just to get it in place there. And you might find by using the other nipple, by using the other spoke, you can actually twist it into place just enough to hold on to your spoke there. There we go, so that's worked. So now I can hold the spoke nipple at this side and remove my sort of uh, installation spoke out of the way. That worked a treat. Okay, just a useful little tip to make if you've never done this before. Even though you've just changed the spoke and this one is noticeably more wobbly than the rest of them, um, it's a good idea just to make a little marker, whether it's on the spoke or on the rim, you could do it with Tipex, a pen, literally anything you can, just so you know the one that you've replaced. So this will be useful for your reference. And also if you need assistance on getting it done properly by a bike shop that you get to in the next town or something, you can quickly identify the one you've replaced. So I'm just gonna use a small section of rim tape here and just stick it on the rim, literally, just so I know from my own knowledge which one it is. So, there's an E13 mark on this particular rim here that I can see on my side, I assume it's on that side as well. Uh, and I've put the sticker on the other side of the spoke, so I know it's the one that's in the middle. Okay, next thing to do then, is to basically nip it up tight. Now this is a key part of this. You do not want to be over tightening this particular one. All you're trying to do is restore the tension that this is removed by not being here. Okay, so have a little feel around of the spokes and you can get an idea of what sort of tension they're at. Now you don't need to be too precise here because you're not going into a full true of this wheel. Um, if your wheel's in a right state at this point, um, it almost doesn't matter. You just need to get it round enough to continue your ride from wherever you are. And the chances are you might need to get it rebuilt or have a new rim. But if you're lucky and you've just broken a spoke like I have here, uh, this one should be absolutely fine. Now at this stage, I'd recommend getting your wheel into your frame or a wheel jig or whatever purpose. I'm gonna use a wheel jig here because it's nice and easy for you to see, but I promise you it is fairly easy to do this in your wheel. Um, it's just a little bit trickier for us to show this on video. Right, so I'm gonna get this in the wheel jig and then we're gonna get this straightened out. So I've got my wheel in the jig here and what you're looking for or what you're hoping to see is the fact your wheel's gonna be straight all the way around until the point where you've made that little sticker so you know where your spoke is. So in this case, it's exactly that. I spin it, it's straight, other than literally here, it pulls all the way over. Now notice pulling to this side, that's because the spoke that was broken is on the opposite side. Now with wheel building and adjusting your wheels, you've got to bear in mind that every adjustment you make will affect everything else, which is why we always suggest you only make quarter of a turn adjustments if you are truing a wheel. In this case though, all we're trying to do is get this spoke to be about the same sort of tightness as the rest. So I'm just carefully gonna take a spoke key and just nip this up and just we're gonna be closely monitoring what's going on. And I'm gonna spin it around accordingly and hopefully this should get as straight um, as it was in the first place. Let's have a look. Not quite there yet. I can still just see the top of the threads here and I can't on any others. So it feels fairly logical just to I'd say we're fairly close. So I'm just gonna run the wheel around. You can still see it pulls over, but not quite as bad. So that's just telling me that I need to just 
adjust this a little bit more. Let's try it. Much better. So now I'm just going to adjust these jaws in. Okay, so if I can stop it just touching on here, which if you're using the cable tie method, um, as you can see in this shot here, then the same thing essentially. Okay, so I've successfully got the wheel back to a roughly straight position. Now don't spend too much time doing this because the more time you spend on this, the more likely you are to mess it up. Remember, you're just replacing the spoke and getting it back to roughly the equal tension of the rest. And then that way your rim should be fairly straight going through there. Now something to tell you about when you're adjusting the spoke nipples is that the actual spokes themselves can twist. Now part of putting some lube on here is to resist that, but you're never going to completely remove it. So you want to sort of de-stress the wheel. And the way to do this uh, is on a surface. So I've got rubber flooring in here, so I don't need to protect it, but you might need to put something over the end of your axles. And you would literally put it on the floor, weight your weight around the wheel, and then flip it over and do the same again. Now quite often you can hear some of the spokes creaking and pinging. You then return it back into your jig or into your front fork or the rear stays of your bike and then just go back to that spoke and just check it again. And at that point, you're pretty much good. Okay, job done then. So we've got the spoke successfully in place. It's following the same lacing pattern as before. Spoke has been lubed, it's got the washer on. I've got it back in place. I've got it roughly as tight as the rest of them and it's straight enough. So again, accentuating the point, don't try and get it perfect if you don't know what you're doing because you're likely to mess it up more than get it to this sort of stage. Now what your aim would be, would be to get to a bike shop at the first opportunity and make sure you keep that marker on there so you know exactly where uh, the one is you replaced so the mechanic in the bike shop will know what you've done and can figure it out from there. Uh, but as soon as you can get it properly fixed, the better. But this is a great way of getting back on the trails. Uh, all I'm going to do now is get the rim tape back on. As I said, if you're out on the, out in the field, some Gorilla Tape or insulating tape will do the job to get a, a tyre inflated. You might not necessarily want the proper stuff like I'm using here. Just bear in mind, if you are using things like Gorilla Tape and that, over time they don't stand up quite as well as proper rim tape does. They can sort of perish and peel off and bubble and stuff. And as for inflating your tyre in the wild, you might not have the option of putting yours up tubeless again, so you might need to put an inner tube at this point. Uh, and then of course, just reverse the process, putting your wheel back on the bike. Uh, get your disc rotor in place, get your cassette back on, if you've needed to remove it. And get back out on the trails. Okay, now I just need to make a little hole in order to get The valve back in place. Smallest hole you can make is the best approach. Obviously it needs to be big enough so you could jab that valve back through. Okay, there we go. That's how you replace a spoke, hopefully without damaging anything else on your wheel. Now, if you do snap a smoke, uh, try not to ride the wheel as it is because of the fact it's gonna be buckled and you can make things worse because you're increasing the tension on other spokes that are being continuously stressed by this. So replacing the spoke and getting it back up to similar tension is probably the best thing that you can do. Again, underlining the point though, if you're not sure about this, find a bike shop, take it to there. Uh, get the spares for your wheels and get involved. Anyone else out there? change the spoke in the field, change the spoke at all, true the wheel, let us know how you got on in the comments underneath. And if you need any more help on things like this to fix on your bike, please let us know in the comments and we'll see you in another maintenance video soon. Take care.